a construction and co., the lessee, signed a three-year contract to lease some heavy equipment from Equipment and Co., the lessor, to use in its construction projects of residential buildings located at the outskirts of the city. The lease payments are 150000 payable at year ends. Both the lessee and lessor cannot terminate the lease during the lease term, and there is no lease extension option in the original terms of the contract. The lessee's incremental borrowing rate is 7% on the commencement date. After the commencement of the lease, the government has announced several incentives to boost the construction of residential buildings in the outskirts of the city, and as a result, construction company expects a significant increase in the volume of real estate development business over the next five years in that area, and that it will have a chance to sign one or more new construction contracts. Also, construction company anticipates an increase in the market prices for leasing heavy construction equipment over the same period. So, at the end of year one, the lessee negotiated and signed a contract with the lessor, to extend the contractual lease term from three to five years for the same lease payments, to encourage the lessee to do more business with the lessor. The lessee's incremental borrowing rate is 8% on the date of modification. Account for this lease transaction before and after the modification. The first step is to calculate the lease liability for the original lease. Here is the schedule for that calculation. The present value of the periodic payments of 150,000, over the original lease term of 3 years, with the lessee's incremental borrowing rate of 7%, is 393,647. This is the lease liability of the original lease before modification. And here is the right of use asset, which includes only the initial measurement of the lease liability, as the example did not mention any other components to be included in the right of use asset. And this is the entry to record the lease transaction on the commencement date. And this is the lease amortization for the original lease. Now, let us account for the modification. Extending the contractual lease term here is a lease modification, because it modifies the terms and conditions of the original contract. The original contract terms included a lease term of only three years, and there was no lease extension option in the contract. The negotiations between the lessee and the lessor modified the terms of the original contract, and now, the lease term is five years instead of the three years originally stated in the contract before modification. Now that we know it is a lease modification, let us see whether to account for it as a separate lease, or as a modification to the original lease. Here is the flowchart for the lease modifications. The first condition. Does the modification increase the scope of the lease by adding the right to use one or more underlying asset? The answer is no. Although the modification increases the scope of the lease agreement, that increase is not done by adding the right to use one or more underlying assets. The increase was done by extending the contractual term of the lease from three to five years. So, the first condition is not satisfied, and therefore, the modification should be accounted for, by adjusting the original lease. In this case, we need to figure out the revised lease term and consideration, then the revised lease payments, then calculate the revised lease liability using the revised discount rate, which is the lessee's incremental borrowing rate at the date of modification. Let us apply in our example. The modification date is the beginning of the second year. The revised lease term is now five years. So, we have only four years to go from the modification date. Insert the discount period for the remaining four years in the lease term. No change in the consideration for the lease modification, 
so insert the same periodic payment of 150,000 for the years from year 2 to year 5. The revised discount rate of 8%, which is the lessee's incremental borrowing rate at the end of the year 1, the date of modification. By calculating the present value factors at the date of modification using the revised discount rate of 8%, then the present values for the annual lease payments. Then adding up this column, we get the revised lease liability on the date of modification. Let us see how to adjust the original lease. These are the data for the original lease, till the end of the first year. The lease liability for the original lease at the end of the first year, the modification date, was 271,203. And the revised lease liability on the same date is 496,819. The difference is the adjustment that should be booked at the end of the first year, to reflect the revised lease liability at the date of modification. What about the calculation of the right of use asset? Let us get back to our flowchart. The lease modification that extends the lease term is not a decrease in the scope. So, it falls here under this category other modifications. For this category of modifications, the right of use asset is adjusted by booking the same adjustment figure that was booked to the lease liability. So, back to our example. This is the balance of the right of use asset for the original lease at the end of the first year, the modification date. By booking the same adjustment figure booked to the lease liability, we get the revised balance for the right of use asset on the modification date. And this is the entry that should be booked on the date of modification. Let us see how the lease amortization schedule looks like after the modification. These are the revised balances for the lease liability and the right of use asset, after booking the adjustments at the end of year 1. Let us continue. These are the beginning balances for year 2, for both the lease liability and the right of use asset. The interest charge is calculated using the revised discount rate of 8%, prevailing at the date of modification. No change in the periodic payments. Then the reduction in the lease liability and the ending balance of the revised lease liability. Complete the workings till year 5. Now to the right of use asset. The depreciation charge is calculated by dividing the revised carrying amount of the right of use asset, by the remaining lease term, 4 years. Let us fill the schedule quickly. And that's it. This is the end of this lecture. We saw in this lecture and the lecture before, the modifications that increase the scope of the lease. In the following lecture, we will work an example for a lease modification that decreases the scope of the lease. So let us go there.